Welcome to Chronosphere Fiction. This is your pilot, Daniel French, of Fishbonious Sound Design. Please fasten your seatbelt, lock in your trays, and put your seat in the upright position as we brave the spectral streams and descend upon Daniel Dread, Episode 7, The End. Kudos to writers Mark Slade and Lothar Tuppen for really wrapping up this story nicely in this finale. There are nice surprises for everyone. Here we go. The Ninth Ninth Tower Tower Productions. Productions. Fishbonious sound design. This is... What the fuck is this thing? Mardina is... Some sort of... Blasted... Spider demon succubus bitch. Of course she is. Why the fuck can't anything be normal in my life anymore? I'm done with this shit. All of it. And I am so done with fucking monsters like this. Die. (laughs) Die. (laughs) Just die. Die, you piece of shit. And just to be safe, let's separate your fucking head from your body. There. Now, where the fuck are my clothes? Rufus, there you are. <sighs> Daniel and I have been searching all night. We finally started divining for where you were. Are you okay? No, no. I am definitely not okay. Do you need a hospital? We can... No, I am just freaked out, tired, and sick of everything. Everything just needs to stop. Are you sure you don't need... Wait. What? Do you feel it? Do I feel what? The stars are finally right. You're right, Mr. Cullen. Everything needs to stop. (sighs) I can't take any more of this shit. Sophie, or whatever the fuck you are, I'm going home. You're right again. I'm not Sophie. And in many ways, I never was. 
Goodbye. For now, at least. <laughs> well, at least now we can stop pretending. Ellison, no. Stop it. We had some good times together, didn't we? Just throw me into the river. I'll find someone else to play with. I don't think so. You treated me like shit, and you're nothing but a fucked up little wooden doll. I'm more now. I'm more than someone to be used by a piece of wood. Wait, damn you. Do you really think this Adam person is gonna ever let you free? He's worse than I am. I can't hear you. <laughs> there. You can't talk without your little face now, can you? <laughs> Hey, babe. Who are you? You want Adam's bitches? I am definitely not anyone's bitch or babe. I am here to make you an offer, though. Why? Why? Because you have potential, Mr. Ellison. I see in you the same potential that your little enchanted lumber and Mr. Black saw in you. I feel so damn special sometimes. But I'll be straight with you, unlike the two of them. I'm listening. I am not what I appear to be. I'm far more powerful than anything you've ever encountered or even heard about from your friend, Mr. Black. I am older than the League or the Congress, and they will all soon be snuffed out. You're not lacking in self-esteem, are you? Look at me, Mr. Ellison. Do you doubt what I am saying? Hmm? No. No, I, uh, I believe you. So, you have about a minute to make up your mind as Mr. Black is returning. You can either worship me, becoming my acolyte, and survive into the next age. Or you can die with the rest of the world, being reborn as the maggots that will help compost everything into something more to my liking than this reality is. <sighs> I'll join you. Good. Then your first task is to kill Mr. Black. I'll come find you later. I now know what to do with you, Tiki. We need to move quickly, Allison. Time's running. What are you doing? I figured out what to do with old Tiki here. <laughs> Take a look. I made him into a wooden dagger. That's great. But we really... <laughs> Take that, Eve. Let me fuck you with my little wooden dick. Over and over and over again. <laughs> that felt really good. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? This is bad, Daniel. I'm getting off the street. I don't think that's going to help. There's an abandoned deli. It'll do for a bit. I think we should talk, Moloch. What about? Don't give me that shit. You know more about what's going on than you're letting on, even more than you told us when we went to hell. That was more purgatory than a hell. Shut up. I know more than you think. Really? Yeah. Ever since I went through your little purgatorial ordeal, I know that I can remove you anytime I want. You're wrong about that! Really? So I didn't just rip you out of my chest then? What do you want? I want to know what's going on. I'm not sure. I'm not buying that. It's true. 
but I'm afraid that it might just be the end of everything. What the fuck do you mean? I mean just that. The end of heaven, hell, earth, demons, angels, and all the other gods that humans created out of their consciousness. I don't know how it's happening, but this is bad for everyone. Then I guess I don't need you anymore, do I? Arpan. Arpan lonshi. Arpan lonshi vovina. Yolkam orpirt. Yaida. Yaida. Arpan lonshi. Arpan lonshi vovina. Yolkam orpirt. Ayaida. Ayaida. I better try to find Sophie and Rufus. Hi, Daniel. Ah, Sophie. Huh, you startled me. This is my new friend, Mr. Ellison. Hi, Danny. What's going on? Uh, uh. He's suddenly gonna take a bit of a nap. Uh, got him. Be quiet, please, be quiet. There's no need for these squabbles. We are all in this together. We have traveled far to reach our destiny. There he goes again, using philosophy when it's only political fascism that is the problem. Please, please, no more fighting. No more. We've... we've been fighting too long. We need to pull our resources together. Find some common ground. This is nothing but a ruse. He is a liar, and we have come too far to turn back and be the League slaves again. I shan't let this happen on my watch. Please, let me be clear about my intentions. We know the known universe is about to end. All life is precious. You, sir, are a fraud. Stop this at once. Get off the floor. No. I am speaking. You have no rights by my people's laws to speak. You are a criminal, a murderer, and worse, a liar. It is good of you to meet with me. I always look forward to these secret meetings, my dear Gollum. Raga, I, I have an idea. Oh? I think we should combine our efforts to dissolve the League and the Congress. Hmm. I'm willing to hear you out. You know I have been fascinated with the occult. Yes, yes. <sighs> Carry on. What if I were to tell you I have a way we can get both sides to join together at long last? Using the occult? Better than creating that fake history, those who preceded me as leader of the League. I agree. A 3,000 year war once made both societies economy trouble. The last hundred years has drained all that, and resources. Huh. Not to mention the population. But I have a fix for both. I'm listening. Earth. That tiny planet with the arrogant human race? <laughs> come, come, Bolum. <laughs> let us not stoop to their level of intelligence. <laughs> I admit there's some slowness to their advancement in that area, but they have expanded in all other areas. <laughs> Exceptional race when it comes to hate and faith. Yes, carry on. Their faith has a way to carry over their spirits. We can harness those spirits and bring them to our universe to repopulate our planets. If you can find a way to do that, you'll have my vote of confidence. So, 
What is your other plan? Oh, both plans are connected. We have the knowledge to bring old gods back and kill off the known universe. Except you and I, of course. Of course. We will jointly rule the new known universe. Where the hell am I? I don't know where we are, Daniel. Damn it, this is weird. Nothing but black skies with stars. Man, I just remember a flash of light and here we are. Where's Sophie? Well? Daniel, Sophie... Sophie disappeared. Her spirit just dissolved right before my eyes. How could that happen? I don't know, Daniel. You're the expert. I've never been through any of this, Rufus. Anyway, things were getting normal until you had sex with that succubus. You can't blame that on me. I... I don't know how I let myself... You do know. What do you mean? No one will say it. But I will. Well, say it then. You drink too much. You go on these benders. Wouldn't you, Daniel? After all the things we've seen, witnessing the weirdest shit ever... Wouldn't you drink? How do you cope? And by the way, nothing was normal about any of our adventures, especially the fake Sophie. I... I suppose you're right. I'm sorry I pulled you into this. I know you are, Daniel. I... I just want my old life back, before I met you or Sophie. No tears, child. This is for the greater good of all living creatures in the known universe. Who cares? Let's extract the farthing thing from the human and get the silver with. Let me go. Cover me up, please. Please, I don't want anyone to see me. Why does this creature rattle on about not being clothed? I, I don't really know. But she's very upset. Please try to have some oh compassion, Raga. I don't want to die. Don't want to die. Die, 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 die. die. <coughs> what? What is that glowing light? No, 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 no. He cannot be. No, you cannot do this to us. We had a deal. Please, take him. Take Gollum, not me. I made no deal. You dare insult me? It was all him, I swear. Gollum did this. <laughs> The end. <laughs> we 
promise that we'll keep broadcasting for as long as we can. We just don't know how long that will be. Sally, while we still can, please let us know what is happening at your location. It's worse than anything I've seen in my 20 years as a war correspondent. It started with two groups of protesters. They began arguing over partisan politics, which began to get heated. That's nothing new, though. No, but things began to take a turn when one black-clad protester on the left and one alt-right supporter on the, well, right, looked at each other. They both started screaming in some language no one's been able to identify, tore their own clothes off, and then started wrestling and, and well, eating. What do you mean, eating? I mean, each other. They just kept biting each other. But not just to bite, they ripped, they chewed, then they swallowed. Jesus Christ. It was more like they were having a contest as to who could eat the other first than it was a fight. And now most of the others are doing the same. Sally, get you and your crew out of there. Get out now. Everyone watching was stunned, but like I said, both sides started doing the same thing. Speaking that weird language, tearing off their clothes and eating each other. Sally, get out. Except for the ones who started screwing each other. I, I don't know. Sally. I should be scared, but everyone looks so tasty and sexy. Thala, Thala Kunlo, Thala Kunlo Magana. Thala Kunlo Magana, Thala Kunlo Magana. Ja ne znam da ovo može da čujete preko I don't even know if this is broadcasting but we have to try This is obvious to everyone who can see the skies but for those of you who have quarantined yourselves in your cellars the stars are moving the constellations are, well, uh, the most accurate description is that they are converging into a singularity. The stars are becoming one star. And the star is getting larger, which probably means that we are moving out of our orbit too. I'm going to die. I know it. I'm going to die. I know it. Oh, God. I know it. Hush. Oh, God. Your suffering has ended. I offer you freedom. I'm... I'm free. She just pointed a finger, and the rope snapped. Oh, God, now what's happening? I can hear your thoughts. <gasps> oh, no. There were one of them. <laughs> they could hear me, too. No. I'm much worse. <gasps> <coughs> 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 It's fear. It's it's rising from my throat, coming out of my mouth. The sphere is mine now. <laughs> oh, 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 God. I never want to go through that ever again. Don't worry. You won't.
Daniel, what is going on? Where did that TV come from? I have no idea, Roof, but the stars have all converged, just like that European reporter described. I don't have any answers, man. Mr. Dredd, Mr. Cullen, I can answer your questions. I'm sure you can, Sophie. Who the hell are you and what in God's name is going on? Rufus, come on. This is Sophie. Really? Are you that blind, Mr. Dredd? I... Ah, shit. Sophie? Mr. Cullen, Rufus, is right. I'm not Sophie. There never was Sophie. Then who are you? Well, that's a long story. Here, let's be civilized about this. Let's make this space into a bar. That would make you feel more comfortable, wouldn't it, Rufus? Fuck you, bitch. Mm, You really are aggressive. Is it because you're scared? Because you lost another person you thought you loved? Or because you feel you were lied to? D. All of the above. That's tough but fair. I could use a drink. Mr. Ellison, come and be our bartender. Yeah. (laughs) Whoa. That is a rush. (laughs) Yes, my lady. What can I get for you two? A Manhattan. Make it two. Make it three and keep them coming. Woo! (laughs) Coming right up. What's going on, Soph? I've known you for forever. You and Rufus are... You're the only people I love. I know, Daniel. And as I'll explain, that is part of the reason why you and Rufus are here with me. And not out there going beyond good and evil and shouting and killing and reveling in joy. Where have I heard that before? H.P. Lovecraft. I read a lot of his stuff when my mom was still at home. (sighs) Shit. Exactly. It's the end of the world, boys. The stars are right and an elder god has awoken. What do you mean? I thought you said these two were smart. Here's your drinks. They are smart, Allison. They're just blinded by love. Oh, hell. Exactly, Daniel. It's me. I'm the Elder God. We're not really what good old HPL envisioned, but in some ways, we're worse. <laughs> No, you're the girl who The girl who you've been in love with your whole life? Indeed. But really, does anything about Sophie actually make any sense? I... As much sense as anything in my entire goddamn life has made sense. Let's see. A weird ghost girl that only certain people can see. A ghost girl that can be physically tangible or not, depending on circumstances that seem completely arbitrary. A ghost girl who might have had her soul captured, a double created, then just stole her soul back and killed everyone, both in the Congress and the League. Wait, what did you just do? And who has now removed the one thing stopping all of reality from collapsing in upon itself. What one thing is that? The human species' illusions about itself. About time, if you ask me. Mr. Ellison, less talking and more mixing. We need more liquor over here. Actually, why don't you just give us that bottle of 12-year-old scotch up on the top shelf there, and we'll just take care of ourselves. That's a great idea, Rufus. Why not live it up? Sophie, please. Tell us what's going on. I'm sorry, Daniel. There's a large part of me, the majority of me, actually, that is just completely disgusted by you humans. An experiment that we grew in a hyperdimensional petri dish, so to speak, that has gotten out of control while we slept. Well, isn't that nice? But 
ever since I was awakened, you've been there. And then there was Rufus. And while I now fully know that Sophie was a fiction, a chrysalis of sorts, I find that there are two things that are keeping me from finishing my becoming. Me and Rufus. Exactly. You're going to kill us, aren't you? I'm not sure. But I don't think so. You said you were awakened. How did that happen? Humans. Humans in pain, betrayed, angry, hurt, despairing. In 1945, in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, a collection of texts was found in earthenware pots. Various agnostic and related Coptic texts is what everyone knows about. What most people don't know is that an even more ancient text was found that had some very potent rituals, one of which was to invoke a very old god of vengeance and retribution. You. Yep, but the ritual was incomplete. That, in conjunction with some very poor English translations, a really shoddy splicing of the ritual onto some European ritual frameworks, and the general inability of magicians from developing proper magical skills, had the unintended consequence of mostly failed summonings. Creating a fractured version of yourself. More than that. My memories, my history were effectively a mosaic of those who invoked me, or their victims. Victims? So the spells worked? Sometimes, but usually in very coincidental ways. An unfortunate car accident here, a home invasion and murder there. The list goes on. So what woke you up the rest of the way? And should we call you something other than Sophie? Nah, you wouldn't be able to pronounce it anyway. The first catalyst was Chimes, thinking he could take my essence. That English bastard should never have touched me. Second, the dreams that the demon Malthus sent us. Those dreams that led us to the Smalligaster. That experience tickled something in the back of my mind. Third was our little visit to Moloch's purgatories, which cleared everything up for me. And then the stars came, right? Yeah, but that was more of a consequence of me awakening, not one of the catalysts. An effect, not a cause. I'm tired, Sophie. I'm so damn tired. I know, Daniel. Hey, where's Moloch? His fetters couldn't hold me anymore, since I forgave my father in hell. I ripped him out of my chest once the riot started. You forgave your dad? Yeah. That's good, Daniel. This just shows that the Sophie part of me is right. You two deserve something better than the rest of the maggots. What about me, goddess? Oh, I have something truly special in mind for you, Ellison. Did you ever really care for us? For me? Yes, part of me that was human. Or at least that tried to be human felt safe. And yes, loved. We did, do, both love you very much. I know. And you both never fought or hated each other, even though you both loved me. I wanted to sometimes, but I've always been more self-destructive than hateful to my friends. Yes, even though you both are pretty fucked up. Thanks. You truly loved me and each other. That sounds awfully sentimental for some ancient god who is here to destroy everything. It does, doesn't it? That's the thing. To finish my work, I need to shed the rest of Sophie. And I can do it the easy way or the hard way. I like it hard. <laughs> <laughs> what? Shit. What the hell did I just say? <laughs> Don't worry, Allison. You'll soon forget that Adam and Eve violated you. So, what way is the easy way? The easy way is just to rip Sophie out of me. To embrace my essence. And engage in as much disdain, anger, and plain hate that humans have refined to such a sublime degree. That's not all that humans are. Are you sure? 
You've seen the way you all have screwed up the world. You can't seem to have a discussion without falling into fear and hate. This group hates that group. This religion hates that religion. Those others are going to destroy everything that's good. No, wait. It's the other side that's going to destroy everything that's good. Let's destroy people's lives for things they said years ago because it makes us feel righteous. They dare to disagree with me, so let's make them sorry they ever thought things I don't agree with. It is pretty screwed up. And then there are the actual murders, wars, rapes, destruction of the earth, etc., etc. If you aren't completely redeemable, it's just a matter of time before the rot gets that far. But all of the cases we've done, you know there's good in people. And you obviously see it in Roof and I or else we wouldn't even be talking right now. Sure. And Sophie is one that sees all that and laments over the complete waste of all that humans have made. The god in me sees that as a design problem. What do you mean? Basic design principle. Sometimes when a system is completely flawed, it is better to trash it and start from scratch with a new design than to try and fix something that is broken. So how does that tie into the hard way to solve your problem? The hard way will be to do what I need to do to clear out this failed experiment while keeping enough Sophie so that I can repay you to the love you gave me. Feeling. That's what's hard. I don't understand. I thought long and hard about just killing both of you painlessly and mercifully. But the nexus between the Sophie part of me and the god of vengeance and retribution, both think that would be a horrible injustice. There's nothing about us that is more redeemable or special than anyone else. Except that I know you, and honestly, I care about you. That almost hypocritical paradox is honestly one of the most intriguing things I think I've ever experienced. So what are you going to do? Well, that's where our friend Mr. Ellison comes in. Yeah, she said I'm special. I have potential. Indeed you do. You have much in common with people throughout mythological history that became the worlds that people would live in. What? And then the god split his body into parts, and from his skull was created the heavens. From his blood came the rivers, from his bones the mountains, etc., etc. What the hell do you mean? I mean, Mr. Ellison, you are so special that you are not only going to become the foundation for one world, but two. Oh, fuck! Get me out of here! Stop. <clears throat> he really is an annoying little prick. What world are you sending me and Daniel to? Different ones, actually. By two worlds, I mean one for you and one for Daniel. Then what about the world that will replace this one? The one you're destroying? That one? That world is going to wait for a while. It needs to be done right this time. Sophie. Enough. This is starting to be more painful than intriguing. Rufus, you won't see me again. But you will get a life that will be more to your liking. Nothing supernatural will bother you ever again. I don't have a problem with that. Daniel, you who are Sophie's oldest friend, you will see a version of me again. Consider it the best gift I could ever give you. Well then, I guess we should say goodbye and not drag this out. That sounds like a good idea. Rufus, Sophie is sorry if she ever hurt you. Yeah, fine, whatever. Rufus, I'm sorry for everything too, man. I don't know what else to say. I know, and I'm sorry too. I guess we all just did the best we could in this really weird life. Yeah. I hope you have a good life, my friend. You too, bud. Let's do this.
Hey, Jeff Coat. The client gave us a bonus for finding her daughter so quick. Yeah, a five-figure bonus. Yeah, we gotta celebrate. Steak dinner, man, at least. A night on the town. Really? Another high-profile case? Damn. We'll really be able to do something for those savings accounts we haven't deposited anything in for years. Let's do it. Friday night, someplace fancy. And I'll finally introduce you to Dorothy. Nah, she's different from the rest. I think I finally did something right in regards to women this time. <laughs> well, you'll get to judge for yourself on Friday, partner. Daniel, I'm home. Hey, Sophie. I was worried, sweetie. You said you'd be home an hour or so ago. I know. I just... I, I think I have really good news, and I hope you think so, too. What is it, honey? Daniel, I'm pregnant. <laughs> you? We're going to have a baby. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. You really think so? Oh, honey, I love you so much. I love you too, handsome. <laughs> like I told them, I really did feel emotion for them. Although in many ways, I still don't know why. But I do know that I had to spare them. But now I can focus on all the rest of you. You who I definitely do not care about. You screaming, crying, shitting, writhing maggots of humanity. Do you ever shut up? And listen all. I am good and evil. I am chaos and order. You are insignificant. I am born of the old gods and I am a dweller of the infinite seas. I have given you life and I have given you death. I have been asleep. Now I wake to devour your world. Daniel Dread, Episode 7, The End Written by Mark Slade and Lothar Tuppen Starring Lothar Tuppen as Daniel Dread Tanya Maloyevic as Sophie Matt Weller as Rufus Pete Lutz as Ellison Drew Prophet as Moloch Nancy Bueller as Sergeant Haynes Austin Beach as Tiki. Daniel Spitzer as Adam Black. Wesley Critchfield as Raga Abu. Amy Pavi as Golem. Christy Glick as Merdina. Lothar Tuppen as U.S. Newscaster. Janet Deiter as Sally. Tanya Maloyevic as Serbian Newscaster. Daniel Dread theme music and various eeriness is by Chauncey Haworth. The Daniel Dread series 
was created and written by Mark Slade and Lothar Tuppen. Directed, edited, and sound design by Daniel French of Fishbonius Sound Design and Chronosphere Fiction. As I bring us back to Earth, I'd like to thank you all for listening to Chronosphere Fiction. Our next scheduled voyages will be to Gafgar and the Eternally Unfurnished, Episode 13, The Fall. And we'll be catching up with Agapantha. Until then, keep your cosmos clean.